Hi guys, I thought it was about time I did a lesson to show you guys uh, better concepts about how you can get scales memorized and see the repeating patterns and talk about fingerings and why they're important. So um, I know a lot of people start with pentatonic, but I want to actually start you with uh, the, uh, the major, minor, diatonic scale, however you want to look at that. Um, we're just going to look at the shape of it because it requires more notes per string, which makes forces you to actually figure out how you're going to use all your fingers in that situation, which I, I think is a good thing. Um, so I'm going to start us on, we'll start on fifth fret here. Um, the reason I'm going to start us here is a lot of people are used to playing A minor pentatonic on the fifth fret. So to me that's box one no matter where you start in the scale. So if I were playing an A minor scale, I'm just going to kind of show you what that looks like right there. Um, I'm going to refer to these as one, three, four shapes, one, two, four shapes, and two on a string. Okay, so I'm not going to use frets, I'm not going to call out frets because I think that's detrimental to you because uh, you really want to know the shape. I don't want to have to think frets, I just want to think I'm making the shape where I'm doing whole steps and half steps and I'm skipping you know, certain patterns because these fingering patterns shift uh, and I don't want to have to rethink frets when I'm thinking of the keys changing, I just want to think of that pattern starting in a different place, okay? So just assume that we're talking four frets in a row. So if it's one, three, four, it's that. Okay, if it's one, two, four, it's going to be that. Now, two on a string is when you have two notes on a string. Now, uh, I'll kind of show you the problem here. So, if we were going, like for example, box, what I'm calling box one in the minor scale, is going to go one, three, four, one, three, four, two on a string. Now, you could either go one, three, and stretch to the next note, or go one, four, and this is called a compression shift, but you're like walking like a caterpillar, basically, okay? So you compress your hand, then your thumb and your hand opens up and moves down so you're not stretching. So you want to figure out, whenever there's two on a string and then it shifts, you want to figure out what your go-to way to do that is so that you, it's a dependable fingering you can just blast through, okay? So I'm going to go one, three, four, one, three, four, one, three, and I'm stretching. Okay, we're down a fret, one, two, four. And then it comes back, one, two, four. Then it returns back to the same thing on both E strings, one, three, four. Four, three, one, four, two, one, four, two, one, three, one. Four, three, one, four, three, one. Okay, uh, now um, I'll show you what would happen if we walked backwards. Four, two, one, four, two. I have this problem of a fairly big, uncomfortable stretch here. So if you want to do that, you could even finger it different coming down. You could go four, two, one, four, one. There you go. Okay, so what's happening is there's a repeating structure of those three shapes, the 4 two, one, the 4 three, one, and the 2 on a string. Um, basically what's happening is the easiest way to remember it, um, the string pair that has the major scale root note in it, the where the major scale starts, it's going to look like 4 two, one. So here's what you want to memorize. 4 two, one, 4 two, one, 4 three, one, 4 three, one, two notes on a string, start over. So we have to know where we are in the sequence, okay? So I know that box number one starts on the first of the one, three, fours. See, so it's going one, three, four, one, three, four, two on a string, start over. One, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. There it is right there, okay? Box number two, if we went up, see if you notice it's that puzzle piece connects right there. That's why it overlaps right here on this finger, okay? So two frets higher, it's gonna go one, two, four, one, two, four. One, three, four, one, three, four, two on a string. Now this time I'm doing two, four because all of this box falls into that position. So the most efficient way is to go two, four and then one, two, four, unless you want to jump around, okay? So think about it. We started on the first of the one, three, four shapes. The next box started on the first of the one, two, four shapes. Okay, now from there, the seam is the pinky. What about this one? Why don't we start there? This, there is a fingering for that. We'll get into that, uh, but it's stretching. So. For now, just follow along, right? So we have one, three, four, one, two, four, pinky. So right there, so three frets higher from here. That's box number three. Okay, so it starts on the second of the one, three, four. So I'll show you what I mean. It goes one, three, four, two notes on a string. It's gonna do a little jog down this way. One, two, four, one, two, four. One, three, four, one, three, four. See, it's that pattern keeps repeating. Okay, the next box, if you kept going, Okay, we're going to be there at the 12th fret now. Okay, so where this one was, right, uh, sorry, right there, this, the overlap is right there at the ring finger. Okay, so this one's going to be the second one, two, four. So we have one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, two notes on a string. So I'm using one, three that time because it sets up. Then the whole thing starts over. What do we always start over at? One, two, four, one, two, four. 
Okay, and if I went one more, so if we overlapped at the pinky, that one's going to start two notes on a string. So it's two, four, and then we go one, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, there's a shift here, one, three, four, and then the two notes on a string is most comfortably done now with these two fingers. So you have boom, boom, okay, just like that, I'll show you again. So instead of going one, three and jumping, which you could do if you want, I'm doing two, four, okay? The other thing to keep in mind there is if you think about where we started at box one, this whole thing's a cycle, right? It comes back around again. So if you were paying attention, you notice that where I was there was the 15th fret. Well, so I know I've got these fun little inlays, but that'd be the first dot after the double dot. Well, that's the same as the first dot at the beginning of the neck, okay? So 15 minus 12 is three. So third fret right there, same thing. Two on a string, so it's those two. Then I'm doing, then where does it start when it returns again to the pattern? One, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. There's a little jog here, one, three, four, two on a string. So if we had an infinite number of strings, it's one, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, two notes on a string, start the thing over. Okay? Now you have to keep in mind you have these little jogs in the pattern. Now that has to do with how the guitar is tuned in standard tuning. Okay? So, um, if you don't know about intervals, you know, we can, we might talk about that in a, in a future lesson. But basically, if you took a scale and you went do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, and you had your seven notes that repeat, if you went from the first note, do, re, mi, fa, up four notes, one, two, three, four, that distance in pitch is called a fourth. Now, that's the distance tuned between the guitar strings. So if you're on your E string and you were playing an E major scale, the fourth note of an E major scale is A. There's the A string, okay? That's true in, unless you're talking about between the G and B strings. So the B is the third note of a G scale, G, A, B. Okay, so because of that, there's a little adjustment in the pattern. Okay, so if you can remember that too, that'll help you know what you're doing. Okay, so like if we were looking at the pattern, like I'll show you, if we had, um, like I'll just show you like this. So let's say if, if we had just an infinite number of strings and they didn't have that weird G string, B string tuning thing we talked about, what it would look like is one, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, two notes on a string, okay? And then it would make one diagonal jog backwards to restart, one, two. So it'd be all parallel and then it would reset a fret lower, okay? But what happens is every time we hit the pattern, so I'll show you the real pattern. This is, you know, here's box one again. There's box two. It's the one that starts on the one, two, four, on the first one, two, four. One, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four. Now two on a string should be parallel, but it's not parallel to this because we just jumped to the B string, so you've got to go up a fret. There it is, that's the one we're fingering like that. And then it starts over at one, two, four. Look at the diagonal jog from here back to one, two, four. So if you know that thing, and you know, you know your cycle, one, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, two notes on a string, you know where each of the five boxes starts within that cycle, and you understand how that, that jump, because of the, the difference in tuning in a third, thirds interval between the G and B string, it's easy to memorize the, the neck because you know why it works. So for example, you know, you know two plus two is four because at some point you proved it to yourself. You know, you took two things and two things and you looked at them and you counted it, it was four. And then you did three plus three and you're like, oh, well that's six. And you, you learned the system of how addition works so you trust the system and it's easy to memorize. It's the same thing with fingerings. So every type of a scale, in this case a major minor scale or any of the seven modes, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian, um, they're all within that scale, okay? Uh, they're all based on that pattern that we talked about. Pentatonic scales are based on patterns of, you know, small shapes and big shapes. So they're based on three smalls, two bigs, okay? Or one, three, one, three, one, three, one, one, four, one, four. Okay, it depends on the thing. Uh, so every type of scale uh, has a particular fingering layout to it uh, or a particular landscape. And as soon as you can understand and recognize that landscape, the easier it is to memorize. And then remember as you're moving up the neck, because we're starting at a different point within the scale as we move up the strings, that basically what's happening is that pattern is moving diagonally across the guitar or like a helix maybe, and that's what's kind of happening. So if you can recognize that, it's way easier to memorize. It doesn't look like nonsense. Um, the other part is to think about the puzzle piece that you're looking to fit the other puzzle piece. So box one, minor scale, goes one, three, four, one, three, four. So look, we have these two guys right here. So it's no wonder that, you know, the next box is one, two, four, one, two, four, because it fits that shape. That's the idea. So that was a realization that helped me with that. Okay, now let's talk about fingering, right? Does fingering matter? 
Uh, yeah, I think it matters a lot, okay? So, um, so I'll show you what I mean. So a lot of people are used to seeing people play pentatonics with like these kind of slanty like this, with this kind of shape. And then maybe about here they can't get to the notes, so they'll flip their thumb under, right? Now that's okay if that's all you're gonna play, right? But if you wanna play certain things like... I can't do that without getting accustomed to using my pinky. Now the problem is, if I were fingering like this, and I decided I wanna play, see the problem here? I wanna play this shape. So if I wanna be able to blend scales, it's gonna matter quite a bit, okay? So if I can't use my pinky there, I have a problem. Because this isn't a real comfortable way to get there at all, right? That's not a comfortable spacing for human hands, okay? Unless you're real tall. So that's, you know, a one, two, four shape where it's half step, whole step, you're pretty much gonna see everybody doing that. Now, you've probably seen lots of people, you know, kind of cheating or doing different fingers, fingers they associate as stronger fingers, on a whole step, half step shape like that. And you can totally get away with that, but for me, you're causing a lot of finger confusion, because you're going, and then if I had to do this, now I gotta do that. You know, that kind of thing, right? So, in my mind, it's better to stick with, if I can, even when I do pentatonics, I'm going, now what this means is I have more ability to play any note within that four fret chunk without having to rethink my fingering. So I could be going. Or. See, and if I had to rethink that and I were missing a finger there, I think it's harder to do that. Can it be done? Sure, a lot of players do it. Um, or a lot of players are going so much pentatonic with, and blue note and stuff that they're not doing that. There are also players that, um, you know, if they had to do this kind of shape, they would fudge it by going and kind of sliding into it. But that's sort of a different thing than, so you're not gonna be able to fudge that by sliding back and forth. Or if you think of, if you had to think of doing like um, Yezu Joy of Man's Desiring, the old box song, right? So if you had to go, I couldn't imagine having to do that like this, you know? Now I can make it work, I guess, if I practice it. Um, but, I, you know... Or... So think of playing that, you know, like this, with less fingers. I, that's not gonna fly, right? So getting used to using all of your fingers to play these things, okay, means that everything gets comfortable. So it's a lot like doing a left-handed layup in basketball, right? I mean, I'm not left-handed, so that's never gonna feel like my right hand, but if I work it enough, it's gonna work as well as my right hand. And the, uh, you know, the spectators watching the game think I'm ambidextrous, okay? So the pinky's never gonna feel like your index finger, but it's a super strong finger. <laughs> Right? It's just that it's shorter, but that's why getting good posture and stuff allows you to mitigate the length differences of your fingers so that you can get everything working there. Okay, so fingerings absolutely matter with that. Um, there's also things, uh, times where different fingerings, uh, like if I had to do melodic minor or something, and I had to go... So that's where if you notice I did do this fingering because I you know, when I play the scale, you wouldn't notice it, but if I have to go and then get to this note, if I did that, uh-oh, can't get there. Okay, so th there's different considerations for different fingerings. So I will always have my primary fingerings and then secondary and third fingerings that I do for different things, okay? But I would seriously encourage you at least be able to have the ability to finger the scales in a one finger per fret sequence to get used to using your fingers. And then you can decide if you wanna turn that off and, and use more of a blues rock kind of fingering. But if you don't have to go to that, if you can stay inside of this, it gives me the ability to always be available with my fingers there, okay? So I hope this has helped you guys. Uh, see you guys next week.